by yourself the next semester. So it's incredibly important that you register and pass this course in your first semester. You will only be allowed to enroll in 13 credit hours during regular registration. On the academic calendar I mentioned earlier, there is a date that will allow you after that to increase up to 18 hours, which we really don't recommend, but it is an option for you. And then last, you will be able to wait list for one course during registration periods. There is a function in, uh, at UTD that allows you to wait list for a class. So initially putting yourself on the, in the line to get registered if a class is full. And you can only do that for one course each semester. Yeah, Registering for classes in ACS. Uh, congratulations for admission to the ACS program, guys, and we welcome you. Uh, registering for classes, students must have attended the orientation. The, C, the ECS department, the various departments have orientations. You must attend those orientations to get enrolled in classes. So advisors will be available during the orientation and they will basically tell you what classes fit your degree plan. So what you may want to do from now till you come to campus is to look at the various degree plans in your area and see what works best for you. And then once you visit with an advisor, uh, discuss your interest and the advisors will tell you exactly what classes will fit your degree plan and assign you uh, the right classes. Now, um, regarding the waivers, um, the ECS departments don't waive them directly on the, at the advising session. So you have to separately apply for the waivers. However, uh, if you show your advisor that you have taken an equal class in your undergraduate, uh, you, can, you can enroll in graduate level classes. Uh, we wanted to make sure that you have uh, all the information what you need for getting into classes. So I suggest you from now till you get onto campus to prepare yourself for internships. That's more important uh, so that you know uh, when the, all those uh, companies come on campus uh, sometime in September, you are ready for interviews. Uh, this will allow you to get into internships in summer of 2020. So regarding classes, we suggest you not to worry about it at this point. Whatever classes you need for your degree plan, the advisors, the department will plan and make sure that the classes are available for you guys. And we will take questions yes. at this point. Okay, so you should be able to type a question or a comment into the chat bar. So please go ahead and type that. We, we have some time, so we'll take as many questions as we can and then we'll close up. How do we make sure that we get our preferred classes and professors as classes are said to be filled up quickly? Um, <laughs> you guys have a recommendation? So uh, what I suggest, uh, professors can change. Again, we promise that the classes what you need for your degree plan, you are going to get it. Uh, however, uh, the professors we cannot guarantee because if there are uh, several hundred students, Everybody cannot get into the class. Uh, you can wait for a semester to sign up for the same professor the following semester. Yeah. When will be, we be able to schedule an appointment with our advisor? You must attend the orientation to see your advisors. So when you come on campus, what we suggest you take care of your holds. Most important, the international ISSO holds, the uh, admissions and enrollment management hold, and the student center, student health center holds. Take care of these holds before you come for department orientation. Right, and for JSOM students, we do have summer and fall orientations, usually the day of or the, ne or the day after ISSO orientation, just to make it easier on you so you don't have to attend multiple days. And once you attend that, you're more than welcome to come up to advising. You're more than welcome to come up before, but we won't be able to remove any holds until you attend that orientation. Yes, and just as a reminder, if you are an F1 or J1 student, you can you cannot enter the country more than 30 days prior to the start of classes. So if you're starting in the summer, just check out that date before the start of classes, which is uh, May 23rd, I believe. And then if you are a student for fall, classes start on August 19th. So 30 days prior is when you can start entering the country. 
the early you, earlier you enter, the more likely you are to get those classes because you have some time to remove those holds. But just as a guide. Uh, so when can we do an internship? In summer vacation? Also, when should we apply for them? You have to be on campus for two long semesters and complete uh, 18 hours of coursework on campus for ECS students. So ECS students must complete their prerequisites and minimum nine graduate hours to take up the internship. Uh, so you will be, the earliest you can take up internship for ECS students will be summer 2020. Same for JSON, two long semesters, meaning fall and spring, depending on when you were in, uh, admitted. Um, can you guide on the requirement of doing some prerequisite courses before our classes start? So for the ECS, uh, you can take those prerequisites in a four-year university. I generally suggest that maybe it may or may not work because a four-year university work. Uh, taking classes online, MOOC and others will not waive the prerequisites. For JSOM students, the main prerequisite would be a calculus course. So if you haven't already taken a calculus course and gotten a equivalent B or better, you might want to do that during the summer if you're a fall admit. If not, you may have to take the course when you get here in your first semester. Excellent. Do we meet our advisor on the day of international orientation or graduate orientation? So uh, the, for the ECS, uh, the orientation, the graduate student orientation is likely to be on August 14th or 15th. Right. And uh, for JSON, the advisors do present at the orientation we require you to attend after the ISSO orientation, so you will meet with at least one advisor, possibly two, depending on if you come up to the advising office afterwards. Can I take a tuberculosis test and meningitis vaccine in India uh -huh. so that I can remove my holds as soon as possible? So no, the tuberculosis test must be administered and interpreted in the United States. So if you're coming for summer, you can set up an appointment with the Student Health Center. That'll be the quickest way to get your TB test done. And they will be able to help you do that. And then they will receive those results within two to three business days. If you're coming in the fall, when you register for international student orientation, you'll be able to register for a TB test that corresponds with your international student orientation date. So it's either going to be you know, maybe a day before or one to two days after international student orientation. Once you take the TB test, the Student Health Center will remove that will remove that TB hold. However, once the results come in, if you're tested positive, then they will put that hold back on. So if you're able to register for classes, great. So it's your job to keep track of your holds. They'll send you an email, so make sure you're checking that, but just make sure that it, if it comes back positive, you go and talk to the health center and they will tell you what you need to do. The meningitis vaccine, I believe, yes, you can take it in um, a foreign country outside of the United States. That's managed by the registrar's office. So my recommendation is verify with them when you can take that vaccine and whether or not it needs to be in the United States. Now, keep in mind the meningitis vaccine is only if you are under the age of 22. So if you're over 22, or 22 or older, you don't need to take the meningitis vaccine and you won't have that hold on your account, regardless of whether or not you've previously gotten the meningitis vaccine. Um, how can we waive courses, so computer science and, and two, one and two, with work experience for MSCS? What kind of documents will be required? So for CS1 and CS2, for computer science students, uh, you must bring a, a a letter from your supervisor stating the work you have done uh, in the areas of programming, in the areas of uh, computer architecture and assembly language, uh, that's for CS2. So you would bring those letters and uh, apply for a waiver and uh, you may be also asked to take a diagnostic test if it's for CS1 and CS2. There is no diagnostic test for uh, other prerequisites, only CS1 and CS2. If you are able to provide a supporting document, you may be asked to take a diagnostic test. 
Excellent. Um, what is the first, when is the first orientation for JSOM students for fall 2019? For fall 2019, I believe it's July 30th or 31st. We're still working out the days and times for that. Excellent. How do we apply for graduate assistantships in JSOM? In JSOM, you have to attend one semester before you can actually apply for the um, graduate assistantships or TA ships. So once you do that, there's an online application through the JSOM website. If you just search on the JSOM website for assistantships, it'll bring you to the direct page to apply. But again, you have to attend at least one semester to establish a GPA. A lot of students who are currently studying at JSOM have given mixed reviews about the change in policies for F1 students. What is your point of view? I'm unfamiliar with any changes to the F1 policy within JSOM. Um, a lot of students that come in may be surprised by the changing catalogs, like their degree requirements. That's the only change that I'm aware of, but I haven't heard anything about uh, F1 status changes. Yeah, and, and keep in mind that all educational requ requirements are the same for all students at the university. So international students don't have different ones than American graduate students or undergraduate students. If you have questions about anything to do with your F1 or your I-20, the International Student Services Office is the best place. They have immigration staff that can give you that guidance, and so you can send them an email. It does take, I would say, four to five business days before um, getting that information, just because they have a lot of questions consistently. So be patient. You can also call them, or if you're here in the United States, you can come into the office for advising. How can we apply for a research assistant for MSCS? Oh, that's an interesting question. So if you want to do a RA, uh, you have to talk to, an, to a professor. Uh, what I would suggest to you is that uh, first thing is that you should have a background that you have published some papers, you have done some research work at a university or at a corporate uh, company and uh, contact the professor in the areas of your interest and then have an inner dialogue with the professor. If the professor finds that you have done some work and you can be hired into his lab, sure, he may offer you an RA. Just think like you're getting an RA position, it's like why should a Google or Microsoft should hire you? Just think about that and apply exactly. Think about the same way and then apply and talk to the professor uh, in the areas of your interest. I have received an admit for MSCS for fall 19. Can I shift it to spring 2020 and start masters from spring 2020? If yes, then do I need to apply for admission again? Uh, if you already have an admission for fall 19, what you need to do is on Orion, if you go, there will be a deferment form. If you click on that and apply for the deferment, the department will approve and you can come in spring. So all the admitted students are allowed to defer up to one year, only once. You can select, if you are admitted for fall 19, you can defer up to fall 20, uh, any semester, spring or summer or fall of 2020, uh, only once by filling out that online deferment form. And if you are going to defer, I recommend that you send an email to the International Student Services Office. That way, if there's any issue with your I-20 or if you need that reissued, they can assist you. Um, what GPA is the requirement for assistantships? For assistantships, it's not the GPA is Sure, is a, a like a mere an indicator. However, the amount of what kind of work you have done. Uh, in that particular area of research, what you're looking for, uh, assistantship, maybe with research. Mm -hmm. The GPA requirement right. for um, The GPA requirement is listed on our website. However, that's not, not one of the main um, points that they consider. They consider, as Jayam said, that there's a whole bunch of um, academic issue or academic um, papers that they may consider as well as just talking to the professor so they get a uh, get to know you and really consider you for that assistantship. When you apply for any uh, RA ship or a TA ship, make sure that you have some scholarly work done in your undergraduate. Uh, that's what is going to 
uh, be a, one of the criteria for selecting as an RA. I have discrete structures as a prerequisite in the admit letter. I believe I have done this course during my undergrad. How can I waive this prerequisite? So when you come on campus uh, at the orientation, the graduate student orientation in the computer science department, have that uh, transcript and syllabus ready. Uh, you will be allowed to take graduate level classes. However, you will have to apply for a waiver in September. So, yeah. You're coming in fall, right? We will have a transfer waiver session in September, and you can apply for the waiver in September. Excellent. How many times can we defer our admit, and do we need to mention any specific reason for this deferral? Only once. A student can defer up to once, one year, up to one year, only once. Once you have deferred, if you want to defer it again, you will have to reapply. Do they have to mention a specific reason for deferment? No. No. Excellent. How should we choose elective courses in business analytics? I'm interested in data science, so should I take all six courses present in data science track to get the degree with data science as a specialization? Yes. Um, we set up the tracks listed on your degree plan specifically for people who have a career track in mind. Um, so those courses that are listed in the degree plan are specifically designed to get you to where you want to be in your career. If um, you don't want to take all those courses, you're more than welcome to take courses from any of the other tracks. However, you want to talk to your program director to make sure that they, that you are aware of any kind of, um, I guess, class availabilities during each semester when you want to take the classes and how those apply towards your chosen career. Does working as a full-time intern for nine to ten months at a startup count as work experience when looking for internships or job opportunities? Uh, it's not the amount of time you have taken up at the internship. Uh, it's the kind of work you have done. That's what uh, basically will get you into jobs, into full-time jobs or internships. When you go for an interview, uh, basically they would like to know your depth of technical understanding, how you can communicate those, those the, the technical stuff to the company and solve how you can solve problems. Uh, that's all the company is looking at. Can we register for classes without our final year transcript? As I'm in my final semester now, it's difficult to get the transcript for it by August. This, uh, is, uh, yeah. this is a little bit difficult. Sometimes the records office will allow you to register without the final transcripts if there are issues with obtaining those transcripts. However, for students who do not have any issues, they do require those final transcripts be submitted to UTD before you can register. If you are, yeah, what I would suggest that if you are unable to get your transcripts before by end of August, then I would suggest that defer your admission to spring. Because if you are not showing that you have graduated, undergraduate, you cannot start the graduate work here. So you have to show a proof that you have graduated with the undergraduate degree before you start the graduate course work at UTD. Scroll back up, let's see. Can we take 12 credits if academic advisors allow it for MSCS as I have multiple prerequisites? I will not recommend. The CS department, generally the, the full load is nine hours. I've seen that students who take 12 hours have dropped classes. They cannot handle it. So uh, what we will do for students who are interested, who have been given several prereqs, uh, we will go on a case by case basis and make sure that you'll be able to handle the coursework and probably you can do 12 hours only for prereqs not for graduate level classes. Uh, there is a tuition fee revision for our Fall 19 JSOM students, but my I-20 has the old amount. Which one do I need to consider, and when do I need to pay the tuition and fees? So for your I-20, I recommend talking to an international student advisor. Um, when they issued that I-20, that that would have been the requirement for tuition and fees. And so you can just verify that that's still the one that you need to prove um, that you have those financial documents for. 
for paying your tuition and fees, you cannot pay tuition and fees until you register for classes. So I always explain this, it's like shopping. You have to decide what you're going to purchase, take it to you know a register or enroll in those, and then they'll decide how much you owe. Because tuition and fees are based on the amount of credit hours you're taking, the types of classes. You'll have additional fees um, to be able to have certain services in certain departments. So like in JSOM or in ECS, you might have fees to use a lab or something else like that. And so they cannot predict exactly how much you will have to pay until you're registered for those courses. Do you guys have any other comments? That cover yeah. comes quite cover. For CS, do we have to choose a track mandatorily or can we align courses according to one's interest? So the first semester when you come on campus for the CS students, uh, you will fill out the acknowledgement of policies, which basically is allows you to select a degree plan. However, you are welcome to change the degree plan in the following semester. So it's a good idea to choose a degree plan of your interest and if you think that if your interest changes, you are welcome to change in the second, the following semester. How many credits would you recommend to take per semester for MS Business Analytics? I would recommend no more than 13. That's why we put the cap there. Most of our students are content with that amount of, of credit hours each semester. Some students are able to accommodate more, but it's really not recommended just because um, of uh, the GPA requirement for your graduate degree. It is a 3.0, so if at any point you fall below that, you're placed on academic probation, and we definitely try to avoid that. That's why we put the cap so you can focus on the specific um, credit hours that you want to take and not just trying to complete the degree quicker. So the ECS students are recommended not to take more than nine hours because of the challenging courses they would take. Every degree plan requires that students should take two core courses, at least one or two core courses in the first two, three semesters. So it's important that uh, you are doing well in your coursework. At the same time, you're also planning to attend, since you will be planning to attend the, uh, the interviews, uh, meet with companies when they come on campus, you should have some free time to prepare for the interviews. So having nine, work, nine hours of coursework every semester is a very good load in ECS. Excellent. While applying for MSCS, I mentioned my choice of specialization as intelligent systems in admission essay. Can I pursue traditional CS now? Absolutely. Uh, nothing is set in stone. Uh, after you come here, you may have selected a traditional track. However, the second semester, you may meet some company folks and then decide to change to data science, absolutely fine. You're welcome to change the degree plans in the following semester. Scroll down. Till what time is the Dean's Scholarship awarded and do we have to order another I-20 after getting the scholarship? So in case uh, for ECS, if students get a fellowship, uh, Johnson School Fellowship, uh, this is a $1,000 scholarship, uh, at that point, you may receive a new uh, revised I-20. Uh, that depends upon when, if you have awarded the first, in the first round or the second round. Mm -hmm. The first round will be awarded sometime in April. Uh, in that case, you may get a, a revised I-20 with the uh, scholarship awarded, uh, whatever is the amount. So, however, if it's going to be the second or third round, by the time it's already delayed, June, July, it may not make much difference for you to get a revised I-20 in July. So you, you would be already ready to go for an interview, visa interview, and uh, the, by the time the letter reaches, may not make it in time. And if you do need to request a revised I-20, you need to request that from the International Student Services Office. You will need to pay for the shipping if you're requesting a second I-20. So the first I-20 is mailed to you for free. If you're needing a second one, you'll need to pay for that. Do you have something else? Um, for JSOM, the Dean's Excellence Scholarship, there is information on our website. If you go to JSOM, um, the JSOM website, and up at the top there's a scholarship tab. It'll tell you the application deadlines and also the awarding um, time frame. Um, I can't recall off the top of my head what they are right now um, for summer or fall, but you can definitely check that out on our website. 
um, where can we access the class registration PowerPoint? So we will post this PDF on our webinars website. I have it pulled up on the screen there. It does take us about a week, so please be patient. And we should be able to report, post the recording on YouTube and Youku. You'll also be able to find that link on our webinars website. Can we complete the MSCS in 1.5 years? If you don't have any prerequisites, sure, you can, uh, if you come in the summer, uh, sure you can. Or even if you come in fall, if you take three courses in fall, three in spring, two in summer, and three in fall, you can finish in one and a half years. In order to waive the prerequisite classes, do we have to bring undergraduate transcript to meet with our advisor? That is correct. You should carry your undergraduate uh, transcript and also a syllabus of the coursework which you think you want to waive the, uh, the, waive the prerequisite. For JSOM, you do not need to bring transcripts to the advisor. We have an online waiver request form which allows you to upload the transcripts digitally and then we review it through there and um, email you the, the um, answer after two to three weeks. Can you please tell approximately the percentage of people managing to get a job after MSCS? Uh, at this point, students are, uh, those who are graduating in spring, uh, many of them have already job offers right in fall, fall of 18 itself. So I would say that most of them or all of them have job offers in hand or right now they are interviewing. What was the approximate batch size of fall 2018 for MSCS? MSC is about 400 students plus. Okay. Um, oh, I am having trouble. On Galaxy Portal, there are two sections, holds and to-do list. Uh, to register for classes, do we only have to complete the holds or both? Uh, you only have to complete the holds to register for classes. However, your to-do list, also needs to be completed at some point. If you don't complete your to-do list by the, the required date, a hold will be placed on your account. Okay. How many people will be awarded with Johnson Fellowships? Now that the department decides based on, uh, generally it will be less than maybe about 40 around so. When can we inspect the results? <laughs> Oh, uh, the first round will be awarded in April, early April. Do internship awards credits can are they which can be accounted towards degree for MSCS? No, in the ECS, uh, in the ECS program, the internships do not apply to the 33 hours of the graduation requirement. Are you guys able to stay for another 10 minutes or sure. so? Okay. So we'll take another 10 minutes of questions or so, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, can we apply for a prerequisite waiver now? Uh, no. Uh, for ECS, you have to be, on, when you come on campus, uh, we have a separate transfer waiver session. Uh, you must attend that uh, information session, and we will accept the applications after that. For JSOM, yes, you can submit them now. We would actually prefer that you submit them early just so we have time to process them before registration. Excellent. For JSON, can you tell me where in the website the prerequisite waiver form is? So if you go to the main website, jindal.utdallas.edu, at the top uh, left, you'll find the advising link. Click on advising, and then there'll be a list of links down within the web page. One of them will say forms. Click on forms, and then you'll find the waiver request form and waiver request rules. Make sure you do not get them confused with the MAS 6102 or 6105 waiver. When can we discuss coursework, coursework for systems engineering and management for fall 2019 with an advisor? When you come on campus at the orientation, you'll have an advisor and you can talk to an advisor. What is the process for applying for a revised I-20 in case I get a scholarship? 
you will need to um, request one from the International Student Services Office. So on their I-20 web page, it should have that information. If not, you can send an email to issoperspective at utdallas.edu and they will let you know what you need to do to request that. For MSBA, what prerequisites would you recommend? Any online course, courses or pre-reads? The Business Analytics degree only has two program prerequisites. One is the Calculus OPRE 6303, so if you have not already taken that, go ahead and try and take that at a, um, a college or university that you're at currently, or a new one if you want to apply to a new one, or you can take it in your first semester. The other prerequisite is the MAS 6102 Professional Development, which must be taken at UTD in your first semester. For JSON, will the internship be counted as credit work? Um, starting in fall 2019, there will be a zero credit hour internship available. You can do that or you can take um, credit for internships. So for uh, business analytics, it is required to take an internship and you can receive credit or starting in fall 2019, there is a zero credit internship. So you can choose that as well as an option. For summer 2019, the internship must be for credit. Do we have the Johnson 1000 scholarship in the second semester? Uh, if somebody is awarded a scholarship that applies for two long semesters for fall of 19 and spring of 2020. Is the entire profile considered for the scholarships or just the GRE score? Uh, for ECS, when you look at the scholarship, they look holistically, uh, right from the students at the college they attended, the GPA they made, the course, the core courses GPA, the qualitative GPA, the GRE scores, and the scholarly work. Same for JSA. For prerequisite waiver, in what form is the syllabus expected? Can we submit the online syllabus from our university website? Yeah, for a waiver, sure you can. That should be work. That will work. Yes. When can we apply for a CPT and OPT? So you need to have attended for two long semesters before applying for CPT and OPT. OPT is only after you graduate, the graduate oh, semester. <laughs> Thank you, Shao. That's a good correction. <laughs> right. Looks like we have a few more people typing. Let me see if we have more questions. Not yet. So again, since all of you are interested in CPT, I will suggest that start preparing. Uh, look, go to, for ECS, uh, go to our web page of IPP, Industrial Practice Program. They'll tell you, uh, uh, they'll tell you the kind of companies that come on campus and prepare for interviews. Uh, all those, uh, basically, the, especially for CS, work on the LEAP code or hackers rank. Start working on that right from now. Uh, so that you are prepared when the companies come on campus in September. Uh, in the interviews, the, most of the problems what you saw, you would see them on LeapGo. Okay. It looks like someone had an addition to that question for SEM for OPT. -CPT? Systems Engineering Management. Thank you. In my admit letter of business analytics, professional development course is given as a prerequisite, but calculus is not mentioned. Does that mean that I only need to take professional development course in the first semester? Correct. Um, your admissions letter is directly related to our review of your application and the requirements for the degree. So the OPRA 6303 quantitative foundations for business is not listed on your admissions letter. It is not required for you to take at all during your degree. So I think we can take maybe two or three more questions. Can MS students also fill the waiver form now? Or MSCS students, sorry. No, we don't. The, you will apply for a waiver in September. Uh, however, when you come on campus yeah, while enrolling in classes, uh, let the advisors know that you have completed those prerequisites. Show them the proof that you have completed those prerequisites in your, in your transcript and they will allow you to enroll in graduate level classes. What is the general recruitment process for internships at UTD? Well, that's a very good question. I think you all are interested in, in uh, going for internships and also full-time jobs. 
So uh, in ECS, uh, I would say that all over the university, even for JSON, uh, we have intern fairs. Uh, every semester, there is an intern fair. The companies come on campus. Uh, we will, uh, you'll get an email every weekend talking about the companies that come on campus and what they are looking for, what kind of recruitment they are going to do, internship or full-time offers. Uh, in addition, uh, there is a career fair every semester uh, on campus wherein uh, all the companies come to recruit students, both undergraduate and graduate. The one day will be for undergraduate recruitment, the second day will be for graduate recruitment. And for CS, uh, Google comes on campus, comes to our department twice a year. Uh, Facebook came for recruitment in December with our three alumni. Microsoft was here three weeks back with our alumni to recruit interns and full-time offers. Do we get any scholarships in the second semester if we have a good GPA in the first semester for MSCS? Uh, for ECS, the departments don't have scholarship. However, you can check uh, the university website, the school website, to see if there are any additional scholarships uh, or any financial aid. Um, could you please elaborate what do MSBA students need to do for CPT? For CPT, it's the same requirements for all other students, uh, two long semesters. Um, in your first semester, you definitely want to get at least three core classes taken care of. And then in your second long semester, you want to look at some uh, electives that correspond to the internships you're interested in. And your program director will definitely be able to assist you. Uh, with finding out which cor which elective courses will correspond to your chosen career or internship. Uh, I would add for the ECS, uh, go to the website of IPP, Industrial Practice Program. That will tell you the requirements for internship for each of those programs. If you are in EE, if you are in CE, you are in TE, or if you are in SEM, or in SES, or SE, or Bioengineering, or even Material Science. Uh, the IPP program has listed all the requirements for uh, taking up the internships. Uh, do prerequisites, or are prerequisites considered for awarding a degree? In ECS, uh, prerequisites, uh, are one of the 5,000 level prerequisites in CS, CS and SC, I know for sure, one prerequisite 5,000 level can be counted towards your 33 credit hours ex in all degree plans except information assurance. For JSON degrees, the program prerequisites are required for degree completion but are not counted towards the total, total required hours for completion. In general, when do CS graduate students start working on their thesis? I would suggest that at least uh, spend two semesters in the department taking the graduate level course. Uh, you may want to identify your area of interest first and take a class with a professor whom you would like to do the thesis with. So during that the coursework have intellectual discussions with the professor and that's where we'll basically will generate interest even for professor. So and the following summer you can sign up for thesis. Uh, thesis uh, is basically uh, takes up six hours of electives in your degree plan for MSc, SNSC program. Great. I think we can take one more question and we have what is the expected batch strength for system engineering and management? I may not have that answer. Well, so. we don't have it. Well, let's take one more then. How many students can be awarded for Dean's Excellence Scholarship for JSOM? That's dependent on the funds availability. Um, there's no specific set uh, number that we award. It's just based off of qualifications and the funds availability. So if there are still funds, we're still going to be rewarding, awarding them. And if the funds have been exhausted for the semester of the year, we will no longer uh, award that scholarship. Great. Okay, so I know some of you didn't get your questions answered but you can send us an email. So I have the emails listed here, also the website. 
So JSOM, um, if you're in JSOM, you can email their advising office and they will happily answer your emails or direct your questions to the correct people. For ECS, I put your website, and so that's a good way to get in contact. And it probably has a lot of the information you're looking for. So. And for CS and SE, I am planning to host a webinar. Uh, you would soon see that and answer all those questions. Once again. <laughs> Great. So for uh, my office, Intercultural Programs, we can definitely help you with any general um, questions. So we can direct you about international student orientation, which you'll see me again at orientation. And we can direct you to the correct offices to help you as well. Well, again, we thank you for joining us. We will post this webinar as a PDF on our website, and the recording, hopefully it worked. Um, and so you'll be able to find that on YouTube and Youku. So please share it with your friends, because they will also be able to view it, and you'll be able to see all the information. And again, thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys, and we look forward to see you on campus soon.